Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, tech lovers and dreamers everywhere, you have reached your destination. Destination AI PTC begins right now. Uh, to my right, I have Mr. Erez Freibach. Did yes. I get that right, Erez? Yes, thank you, Dean. Uh, uh, excellent. Uh, Erez is the co-founder and CEO of Zudacore. I also have Mai Truong. Mai is the CTO of Zudacore. Gentlemen, welcome to Destination AI. Thanks so much for having us, Dean. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. you bet. As the name suggests, we're going to talk about AI. Um, but first, for context, Mai, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Zudacore? So Zudacore is using a two-phase direct-to-chip approach for liquid cooling, specifically around AI applications. We have solutions for any of the major providers out there for AI Silicon from NVIDIA to AMD and Intel. Um, and we have a lot of custom work that we've done in this space as well. Our approach is very unique in that we're taking a pool boiling approach to two-phase cooling. So brings with it a lot of performance advantages compared to any of the other liquid cooling solutions that are in the market today. Mm. Okay, so there was, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, thank you very much for that, Mai. But let's talk about why it's important. Why, why is your solution important to the future of AI? Yeah, so I think that uh, in order to answer that question, why AI? And, and Let's do it, right? let's do so it. So it's a big question, a lot of answers out there. To me, uh, currently, you, th you can think about data as islands. Mm -hmm. you know, the medical and then the um, um, uh, geographical and weather. Yes. Uh, with, with the AI, what I see that we will uh, be able to create one world of data and that, that will make a lot of uh, new understandings. And uh, so, and apparently, I think that that will be the, um, the major thing that you will live with and... Uh, and use it on a daily basis. So, Eris, are you saying, and maybe maybe you're not saying this, but I'm going to ask anyway, are you saying that these islands of data right now where, let's just say, healthcare, and in healthcare, there's an island of data, and we, and we go to that island, and we look through the data, and we say, okay, uh, this is going to help me make this decision. What you're saying is AI is going to allow all of those islands of data to come together so that the information that we're able to get from the large island is much more informative and perhaps is actually generating new information that will help us in the healthcare field do what it is that we do better. For example, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see a lot of uh, synergies, how the environmental data is impacting the health. So currently today is very it. small amount of uh, information. Yeah. Uh, the access of uh, of uh, data of uh, health data is was uh, not easy. Mm -hmm. Now there is a lot of data and it's accessible, and you can merge it to other worlds and start to build the new uh, health. Yeah. The the thing is around that is that um, the world is changing uh, very quickly compared to our evolution. Yeah. So we need to adopt or to uh, serve our uh, slow revolution or evolution yeah. to the fast revolution of the world by understanding more and react more to be proactive more. Mai, your thoughts? I think it's going to be a very brave new world for us when you start integrating all these pieces. Yeah. And, and what Ares is driving at is like very, very apropos for a lot of the work that we do. When you start bringing these data sets together, you can actually start thinking about like what you can you evolve and change about the world that you interact in. So I'll give you an example. Healthcare is a great part. Um, healthcare outcomes are driven by some environmental factors. But part of that environmental factor is how you think about like maybe the environment that you didn't need to work in. Is it easier to go and do something very different yeah. with that AI driven world that you have? So how do we really evolve this? There's a, there's a lot of like, um, very novel ways that we probably haven't thought of that will That's my more favorite likely part. <laughs> invent themselves on our behalf <laughs> that as is we my start thinking part. through yeah. AI. So letting AI think it think its way through in, in novel ways, I think is very informative on what we can do. So maybe like healthcare, like maybe like thinking about AI in like visual modes in detecting data that we can't see in a normal visual field of reference. <laughs> this is right. what I'm talking about, folks. Yes. So, yeah, so I, I think if we are thinking about AI, it's a story of energy. 
in the end of the day. A lot of energy that converts to heat mm -hmm. that we need to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And probably we must uh, find a way to reuse it. And that's where Zutacore enable uh, and shining the most. So, yeah. so reusing the heat that is being generated by AI applications. Exactly. It, okay. So, so fascinating. To everybody me. today are talking about nuclear plants. Yes. That this is the only way to serve this need, growing yeah. need. What are you doing with all this uh, energy yeah. in the end of the day? So it converts to heat. That's what data center does. Yeah. You must find a way to harvest it, and that's what we do the best, and repurpose it to, to use it in uh, different applications. What are some of those applications? What, how, how would you repurpose? Because this is, again, fascinating to me. <laughs> so so um, AI is going to generate a lot of heat, and we're spending a lot of time thinking about how to cool off things. And you're saying we can actually use that heat as it's... It's creating its own energy. Yes. And where can you... So that's, that's exactly it, Dean. So think, think about it this way. An AI <laughs> I'm, so, factory, I'm such a non-engineer, but this <laughs> really an AI excites factory me, you guys. It's about a gigawatt of yeah. scale of power. So just to, for a frame of reference, like a nuclear power facility is about yeah. two gigawatts of power, right? So okay. let's say two AI factories use a nuclear power plant as energy source. Two. Two. <laughs> two. Okay. So let's take that AI factory and you have now a gigawatt of power and you're using it to drive some very novel workloads, highly beneficial to the mm -hmm. ecosystem that it lives in. But we really need to take those that energy that you produce and give those electrons a second useful life. Mm -hmm. How do you give those electrons a second useful life in its evolution of its state change? So you drive a great workload, but one of the challenges you have when you're using a single phase liquid cooling approach is that you're diluting that energy so effectively that you can't recover energy from it. Mm -hmm. What you have a benefit of with a two-phase approach is you're taking this energy and you're starting to drive an energy reuse cycle. You can throw off heat, take that heat, make it high grade, and push that heat to the local communities that you're operating in for a start. So very, very popular method inside of Europe to take heat and reuse it. But what if we take that and say that we're already at the start of like a very valuable 60 to 100 degrees heat source on top of that silicon mm -hmm. and we keep it high quality? Can we start generating power from that power that you just consume and start a very fortuitous cycle as part of that energy <laughs> reuse? Very nice benefits when you start thinking about this yeah. from your carbon footprint and your sustainability of your workload. And it's extremely important for us to be able to be a very positive element inside of our communities that we're deploying these gigawatt sites into. Right? My, you are solving a lot of a lot of a lot of challenges simply by making something better, by making something more efficient. You know, it it is it's. Here's why it, this is so fascinating to me, because in my mind, and I, and I think about this stuff all the time, in my mind, I thought, well, one day AI is going to be the solution to its own problem. And I was thinking that it would be the smarts. It would be the 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 um, the processing of, of, of the, the actual application of a that will AI that will say, OK, this is how you become more sustainable. And and what you're saying is that kind of the physical the physical part of AI actually is going to, it could become a solution to its own problem it, it before it become. ever started exactly. thinking it about it. It must become part of its yeah. own solution as we push these workloads at scale into the environments. Yeah, no, I, that I is. I think that's what, what we're saying actually that uh, cooling data centers is a given. Yeah. You must be efficient. Yeah. You must uh, serve all the applications, etc. But you are uh, turned into an uh, energy provider, a secondary <laughs> provider, and that's what we're doing. Think about it another way here. Uh, you've large, already blown yeah, my mind. Yeah. On the large all majority this. of the world is actually quite water constrained. Uh -huh. That's the reality. Yeah. Potable water and potable, um, effective ways of producing potable water mm -hmm. sources is actually a strong challenge for us in the world. Yeah. But if you put that gigawatt site next to it and you actually start developing a very valuable re reuse cycle as part of your energy, why not make potable water from very dirty brackish water that covers the large majority of the earth? Why not do that? So how do we start thinking about like very integrated approaches to sustainability driving very positive outcomes where it's anchored around that AI workload? That is next level sustainability. That's like that's like that's like take yeah that's like taking like like feeding the world with garbage, um, 
that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> but you guys know what I mean. It's just yeah. like all of the stuff that we discard every day. What if it were actually food? You know? Yeah. How about we start the reduce, uh, recycle, <laughs> the recycling uh, story with electrons? Yeah. And we make electrons a very valuable commodity for us in the world. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So, like, my last question is always like, "Where's this going? Let's dream a little bit." But you guys have. You guys have put me right smack dab into the middle yeah. of the dream. Uh, I had never really considered that as being a possibility. And you're saying not only is it a possibility, we're doing it. Yeah. We must do it. We must get there. And yeah. we as an ecosystem must drive like the right direction here. Erez, my Zutacor, uh, this is this was really really a pleasure uh, to speak to both of you. Um, I would love to do it again. Um, maybe you know six months from now, uh, talk sure. about it again, have this very same conversation, and um, th maybe ne next th next time I won't um, I won't fanboy out so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us, Dean. Really appreciate yeah. us having uh, having. Thank us you very much. You bet. You us. bet. And that is Destination AI PTC. Thank you.